Today is June the 26th, 2019. I'm going to show you something here that um, it's a repair job, but it, I think it's a rather unique repair job. And, and uh, I found this on uh, eBay, which is what I needed. Uh, a quick, uh, a quick uh, explanation of what happened. This is the receiver, the 75S3, and I also have the uh, 32S1. My 32S1 transmitter got very intermittent, and um, after about 10 minutes of warm up. It would, uh, it would quit. It just no, no more audio output. It stayed powered up and everything. Of course, it didn't blow any fuses, but I couldn't get any uh, throughput. I couldn't turn up the mic gain and get any carrier out of it, or uh, or no audio would go through. So anyway, it took me about four days to figure it out. Well, what it boiled down to is it was a, uh, it was this little, uh, it was this little guy right here, the uh, the mechanical filter. I'll show you in the schematic here in just a second. But it's about 50 ohms in and 50 ohms out when it's working right. And finally, finally, I, I, I caught it when uh, the primary was open. It would just completely open up. And then when it cooled down, it would start working again. Well, I found this one on eBay. I mean, part number at all, look at there, factory sealed. Now, it's not sealed. It's been opened. But I just thought that was... Uh, a really rare find. I've never heard of one of these uh, little mechanical filters going bad either. Well, anyway, I happen to be the proud owner of one. So what I did is I wanted to get my transmitter back on the air because I have m multiple receivers, but I only had one transmitter. So I borrowed the, uh, the filter out of the uh, receiver. The receiver has two mechanical filters in it. One of them is this. There's a common one. There's one of these in the transmitter and there's one of these in the receiver. And there's a secondary re uh, a second uh, mechanical filter in the receiver. Also, I'll show you underneath just just how beautiful this stuff is, and then I'll show you a technique that actually helped uh, help me fix it. Okay, I'm gonna uh, take it out of its skin and uh, show you underneath, and we'll we'll get to the point here. This part may not be necessary, but for those that ever have this S-line equipment, it's all pretty much the same. There's two screws right here, and then the receiver and the transmitter. I don't. I don't know about the transmitter. And the receiver, you can get your finger up underneath here, but and some of the other S-Line equipment, the way it's built, it's just almost impossible to get the nut back on the bottom. But I'll show you a technique that I have found that, that actually works. And then underneath, well, after you remove these two screws right here, this one and this one, then you have to uh, remove the feet right here. I might mention that in the... Um, in the heavier equipment, there's actually a, usually a third foot right here, but in the lighter equipment, there's just a screw. You know, you, you, you take these off, and then it'll come slide right out the front. It's actually quite easy. Well, here's what they look like. If you if you have any of this s lot equipment and you've ever taken it apart, you recognize this pretty quickly. But if you haven't, then, uh, you know, then you can flip it over here. Uh, and the mechanical filter, I'm going to have to, I want to, I want to take the camera off here. I try to move it around as little as possible. But I think it's a good idea sometimes to really show you what's going on. See, there's one mechanical filter right there, and the other one uh, bolts down under there. And um, most of it's original. I did replace uh, all of the... Uh, the paper caps some time ago with these orange drop and the electrolytic so it has been updated in that sense uh, there you go nothing terribly exciting but I always think it's really beautiful equipment okay let, uh, let me uh, let me put the camera back here I don't even need to stop it I don't think a little bit of bumping around here but uh, I want to open this guy up and show it to you I think it is pretty rare that these mechanical filters go bad and I just felt extremely lucky to find one one of the original you know, uh, a genuine I don't want to drop it look how look how they've got it packaged I mean this thing's been packaged up for 60 years probably and there it is right there I'll show you what, what the lettering means on it I actually understand it now see that says F455 I think you can probably see it. It's, it's easier to see in the video than it is on the uh, on the um, camera where I'm at. The the 21 means it's a 2.1 uh, kilohertz. Uh, let me uh, 
let me get ready here and, and I'll I'll put it in and I'll show you. I had a little bit of an interruption there, but I want to get back to this. Yeah, 455 kilohertz, 2.1, 455 uh, kilohertz uh, band pass and 2.1 uh, bandwidth. There's the part number 526-933700. And uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful little thing. Pretty lucky to find that. So let's we'll solder it in there and uh, make it work again. Okay, well there it is back in there. No big deal. It just mounts under there. There's two terminals here in the front and two in the back and there's a ground one. So I'll put it back in exactly like I took it out. Let me show you where it is in the schematic. It's this guy right here, FL1. This side was opening up. From here to ground should be about 50 ohms, and from here to ground should be about 50 ohms. Certainly not infinite. And here's the whole schematic from the beginning to the end. I love these types of schematics. You can really follow things through really nice and something I can still actually see. But let me show you something, and, and, and then we'll end this video, that uh, really helped me. What I did is I set up one of my little oscilloscopes. So what we're doing here is we're looking at a video that I made of my oscilloscope and making these measurements because they were just kind of so complex I, I, I couldn't quite figure it out. And uh, I recorded, and you'll hear me talking. See? So I started measuring points, and I'm talking about what I'm doing when I'm making measurements. And then this is while it's working. And then when it quit working, I could go back and watch what I was doing here because things things get kind of complex. I don't know. I to, yeah, see? BFO input. That's what that's supposed to look like. I'm not going to show you the whole thing here. But it's just, just a way that I went about doing it and uh, measuring the different voltages at the different points along it. So there you go. That helped me a lot. As a matter of fact, I think it's a, it was a pretty essential. I'm not seeing very much change in there. But anyway, I'll probably do that again in the future if it gets complex. And again, I'm so pleased to find a component, you know, that's been laying around on a shelf for 60 years, waiting for the moment that I need it. Uh, I don't know what happened to the one that I took out of there. Let me stop this thing. We don't need that. Don't need that in the background. Um, but I'm so pleased that I found it. I'm sure it's going to work. I don't think there's anything else to show in this video. I'll put it back together and uh, check it out here on the on the workbench with a signal generator. I put a signal in right there, and you know what I mean. Just just see that it works, and then. Uh, put this little guy back in uh, in service. I'll be making another video pretty soon. I picked up a most gorgeous KWM2A and a 51S1 receiver and a whole bunch of other stuff too that I got to show you. They gave me this kind of stuff down here. All these old heat kit meters and oh I got more stuff that I don't know what to do with. But I, uh, I sure do enjoy all this and I hope this helps somehow uh, keep the old Collins equipment running. At uh, 60 years old, it still works just marvelously, and it can still be repaired, and and rare as it might be, uh, you can still get exotic parts like this for it. So, thanks for watching. Stay safe. I guess the video wouldn't be complete without showing the radio working, so here you go. Right now, we're listening to uh, K8NY on this 51S one. I'll move it over to this one. Receiver, the one 
one we just fixed. KWM2A is coming out of this speaker, and uh, I switched, I was switching that speaker between the 51S and the 75S3. Yeah, there you go. It's like QSB's taking him down. This is a 30L1. Okay. This, these two right here, two that I've operated for since 1983. That's that's been my uh, my main station. I picked these up over the weekend. This KWM2A is made by Rockwell Collins. Down at the bottom, which I can't get all in the same picture at the same time. It came with this Rockwell Collins power supply and this Rockwell Collins, uh, all three of uh, these are matching units. Oh yeah, here's something. When I first got it and brought it home, it was missing the uh, what, the uh, the fuse holder. I thought, well, things like that happen. I guess it falls out. And then when I went back the next day, I found this. found this little bag. And in this little bag is a fuse holder. With a 4 amp fuse in it, just like it's supposed to be. Here, I'm gonna have to get in front of the camera. Uh, I'll show you all this stuff. I just find all this stuff so so exciting. And there's a little fuse holder. Also came with this right here. From, and, and look what else is in here too. Brand new. Apparently never been plated because it also came without the 5U4 and the 5R4, but that didn't bother me. Look at there. I believe that is a true NOS, never been used. I don't know where this uh, radio came from initially. I bought it from a, 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 an estate sales for the for the gentleman that uh, passed away, Silent Key, and uh, he had a lot of equipment, some really really nice stuff. I also had a 3001, but I didn't buy it because I didn't need it. And here's the uh, 5R4. Now these these are you can th these are brand new tubes. Look at there. 5R4GB USA. I got a find there. I'm telling you, I got some uh, real jewel. I am just, I am, uh, like I think I've already said, I'm like a kid in a candy store with that little KWM2A and that 51S1. That I know why that's such a coveted receiver now. That's a general purpose receiver, but it is just absolutely uh, amazing. Anyway, there we go. That's uh, a bit humid, but uh, usually it doesn't get that hot in, in Hawaii. Over. This little speaker yeah, down yeah. here is a little three-inch speaker. It's a Collins winged emblem, as you can see right there, but it's just a little three or three-and-a-half-inch speaker that just sounds so darn good. There's no speaker in this power supply. I know there is in some, and, of course, there is a speaker of that, the original one. Back to this receiver right here. Just to play a little bit more. I'll show you. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Okay, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I was wondering. Uh, See if you have any preference uh, to you know, maybe which one, which sound you like better. That's the that's the KWM2 uh, out of this little speaker down here. Let's switch over to the 51S. Is that from the same, or is it more prevalent during winter than summer? Over. Actually, this receiver is a little bit quieter. There is action in the winter time because they're trying to get away from their cold weather to a warmer. If you're not familiar with this uh, type of radio, here is the readout. There's the 14.2 megahertz and then the 14.242. That's the way that thing works. I am. Uh, I'm really having a lot of fun. Let me move the camera back a little bit more. 
so we can actually get it all in there. Yeah, Bob's coming in here really good from West Virginia right now. Well, that's my, most of my calling setup. I got an old R390 over here in the corner. I do love the old Collins equipment. And I never really thought I was going to get a receiver like that 51S. And for the last piece of uh, Collins equipment, any of you that's watched my channel very much has, have always seen this one too, but if you're new to my channel and you like amateur radio stuff, you got to like this one too. This is made in, was a 1947, it's the 3-1000Z, I'll fire up the filament on it. And there you go. That's my Collins stash. Things are a little bit in disarray down here because I've, I've got this, uh, I've got this cabinet right here pulled out so I can get behind it and and uh, set up the, the final operation. Very good. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, again, stay safe. I want to show you some other things about a general coverage receiver like this. For example, let's go up to uh, 15 megahertz, and we'll go back under 15.0. Here playing with a general coverage receiver. The R390 is general coverage. This one's a little easier to work with. 15.1 WWV. Got an AM now. Not real good there, huh? There's 10 megahertz. WWV's not coming in very good there. There, WWV. And you know, WWV also transmits on two and a half megahertz. Sorry for all that noise. That's noisy. Let's see if we can find it on 2.5. Should be right there. Hear it there sometimes. I'm here right now, though. Do I? And then, of course, you can go down into the uh, AM band. That's 500 kilohertz. That was a good series for the Padres. It really turned around the road trip. There's 600 kilohertz right there. I know there's a big station at 690. Morning. And this is in New Hampshire now. Um, this is kind of a weird station. See, it even speaks foreign language. Eight hundred kilohertz, and so on. So that's a that's the beauty of a, of a general coverage receiver.